Hey guys, it's History Behind the Warrior, and today I'm going to be talking about Geese Howard in celebration of his reveal as DLC for Tekken 7. Now, in order to talk about this character, we need to go very far back for the King of Fighter games, even Fatal Fury. Now, Geese was born in Southtown, being the child of a very poor American woman and an Austrian terrorist. And not long after he was born, his father would walk out on him. So as he grew up, he took numerous jobs around the city in order to look after his mother. As you see, due to their poor living conditions, Geese's mother fell ill, so he would do his best to try and buy her medicine and food, but unfortunately this wasn't enough, and Geese's mother passed away in the night. Now Geese didn't let his sorrow consume him, and set his eyes on his father in Europe, so he could track him down and actually assassinate him. Now as he was tracking him down, he learned of the man's name, Rudolf Krauser von Stronheim, but did fail when his half-brother, Wolfgang Krauser, interfered and defeated him in humiliating fashion. Devastated by this, he would turn to religion but unfortunately, this didn't stop the rage and anger that was built up inside of him. So he turned to martial arts as he learned that power grants results. He trained with the grandfather of Blue Mary Ryan and Toji Sakata before settling down at Teng Fu Rei's dojo, where he would train alongside Jeff Bogard and Cheng Sizan. Now the three worked in tandem with each other and were dubbed as the three brothers of godly battle. Now despite his teaching, Geese's soul still hungered for power due to his rage. He would intimidate and bribe many members of South Town's local mafia, and eventually his sensei had caught word of this and refused to teach him any sacred techniques. Now, as Geese was upset about this, he departed from the school, ending all relationship and ties with everyone that was there. Now, after leaving the dojo, he would set his eyes on South Town's kingpin, Big. Now, in order to put himself in a high and strong position, Geese would become a police officer and work his way up, eventually becoming the commissioner of the city. Now, to separate his association with the mafia and what he does, he would create his own headquarters called Geese Tower. Now as time had passed in the art of fighting too, Geese would start pulling strings from the shadows in order to have things go in his favour. And within a heartbeat, Geese controlled the entirety of South Town. He had become the new kingpin, but he wanted more control and believed that a display of his power at the first King of Fighters tournament would be a great way to show this off. Unfortunately for him, he came out of the event empty handed and was defeated by Ryo. Now this is where we go into the Fatal Fury series. Geese would set his eyes on his old friend, Jeff. Bogart and kill him in front of his adopted son, Terry. Now little did Geese know that he set the cogs in motion of his own downfall. You see, 10 long years would pass and Geese would announce another King of Fighters tournament where the young boy, Terry, had now become a man and he teamed up with his younger brother, Andy, and their friend, Joe Higashi. They entered the King of Fighters tournament in order to take down Geese. Now Terry would go face to face with him and defeat him, accidentally knocking him out a window and plummet to his apparent death. Little did Terry know that Geese Geese had in fact survived. You see, the 10 years between Jeff Bogard's death and this tournament, Geese had been seeking out a Chinese scroll called the Phoenix Scroll that would allow any user to survive deadly if not so fatal wounds. So this is in fact how he survived the first Fatal Fury game. And whilst recovering from his wounds, Geese's half-brother, Wolfgang Krauser, would brawl with Terry, although he was also defeated. It's only until Fatal Fury 3 where Geese resurfaces once again, where he's trying to track down three Jin scrolls. Now Terry and his friends would catch word of this and try their best to stop him, managing to gain two of the three scrolls. Now in order to flush them out, Geese would organise another King of Fighters tournament where the scrolls would be on the line. You see, Geese wanted to obtain ultimate power and these scrolls were the key. So he wanted to get it and then destroy the scrolls so he could have all of that amazing power to himself. But once again, much like the first Fatal Fury game, he would be defeated by Terry Bogard and thrown out of a tower. Now Terry would attempt to save his life, but Geese refused to allow this and let himself plummet to his death. Now despite this happening, he somehow does survive and continues to participate in future King of Fighters tournaments and does play a minor role in these games. Now, during the King of Fighters tournament 1994, he would team up with Mr. Big and his half-brother Wolfgang Krauser. Now Geese would enter the tournament as a former partner of his, Rugal, had obtained his power known as Orochi. So he would participate in the tournament to learn more about it so he could possibly obtain it and control it. He went even so far to the extent where he sent off someone to spy on Ayori Yagami, as his entire bloodline is linked to Orochi. Now during the King of Fighters 96, Geese once again teams up with Krauser and Mr. Big so he can eliminate some opposition to regain control of South Town and obtain this Orochi power. Now things quickly become personal as Terry also does participate in this one, but before he's able to go head to head with Terry, he's in fact defeated by Kyo Kusanagi. Now during the end of this tournament, Mr. Big tries to have him assassinated, but he's 
protected by Billy. And ever since the King of Fighters 96, Geese kind of goes into retirement. You see, when the King of Fighters 97 rolls around, he sends in his own team to fight for him and obtain Orochi's power. But once again, they fail, and Geese does remain absent for a significant amount of time. But in the most recent tournament, he does return. He decides to team up with Billy and Hein, his butler, to unlock the secrets of another Jin scroll, one that has prophesied the coming of a being called Verse. So much like the previous game, he would enter with the hopes of obtaining this being's power. But that's really it for now, guys. I know Geese has a son called Rock Howard, but Rock's existence within the main continuity of SNK is actually non-canical. He is indeed a fan favourite, but they haven't really brought the character into the main continuity. And talking about continuity, researching this was very difficult. So if you're a massive SNK lore buff, please go out and fill out the stuff like the SNK Wikipedia page or King of Fighters, or even publish stuff yourself, because there really isn't a lot of SNK love online. So by doing that, you're not only helping me when I actually make videos, but you're helping the SNK community grow. Now let's talk about Geese himself as a character. The man is very methodical and has had a very tough upbringing. Makes his loss for power very understandable, but not so much the ruthless extent he does go to get them. He is a true villain at heart, so I do have to admit, Geese is a pretty awesome villain, and I do love his feud with Terry, especially when he shouts out predictable. Now I'm looking forward to seeing him appear in Tekken 7. His reveal trailer was absolutely fantastic, and what a great choice by Bandai Namco and Harada to reach out and bring in a character like this. Now how do you guys feel about Geese Howard being DLC in Tekken 7? And will you be maining him? And who do you think will be the next guest DLC character to appear in Tekken 7? Please comment down below, as apparently, Harada has recently had a meeting with Arc System, so we may get someone from Blaze Blue or Guilty Gear. Does that mean you'll probably get Guilty Gear or Blaze Blue video? Yeah, pretty much. Now before this video wraps up guys, if possible, let's try getting it to about 500 likes. It's a great way of supporting this channel, as YouTube's ad system is kind of broken right now. So by giving it a thumbs up, it helps out a ton. Now as always guys, please comment, like, subscribe, and share this video with everyone you know. Please take care and I'll see you all next time.